The only way to get it is to take more of it. So take enough vitamin C, a small amount won't do it. There are a few hospitals in the United States and other parts of the world which have included intravenous vitamin C in their protocol for treating the coronavirus. They have had much better success rates. Unfortunately, most hospitals in the US don't use it. But we can use vitamin C as a preventative and increase the amount as needed. Dr. Linus Pauling, a two-time Nobel Prize recipient, recommended doses of vitamin C to bowel tolerance level. This means you keep increasing the amount you take per day until your stools start to get a little bit loose. At that point, back off so your stools are normal. You will find that the sicker you are, the more you will need. I usually take about 3,000 milligrams a day, but when I'm sick, I can take 12,000 milligrams, sometimes more. Um, B propolis is another great supplement to strengthen your immune system. Propolis is a resinous substance which bees collect from various plants to construct and seal cracks in their beehive. The bee propolis contains hundreds of compounds that fight disease and damage in the body, and it boosts your immune system. It contains significant antimicrobial and antiviral properties. Like vitamin C, studies have shown that it reduces the number of and the duration of colds and viral infection. Could you spell that? P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S. It's a B, it's a B-E-E, B propolis. Mm -hmm. You can take, yeah, no problem. You can take 500 to 1,000 milligrams once or twice a day as a preventative, three to four times a day if you develop symptoms of anything. I mean, it's good for even, keep in mind that the cold, the common cold is a coronavirus. It's not a deadly coronavirus, but it is a coronavirus, that type of virus. Correcting deficiencies in vital nutrients, such as vitamin D or zinc, also boosts the immune system. Not everything works for everyone, because not everyone has the same deficiencies. Correcting deficiencies of vitamins and minerals in the body reduces the overall stress load and improves your health. There's no benefit from taking a supplement you do not need, and it can cause potential harm if you don't need it. So don't take anything just because someone said it's good for you. But if you're deficient in something, you should supplement. Another thing you can do is to get some hydrogen peroxide and swish it around in your mouth. About a capful of hydrogen peroxide with a capful of water. Like you reduce it. Half and half. Half hydrogen peroxide, half water. Right, half and half. Uh, I mean, what you're buying in the store is only a 3% solution anyway. It's not, it's not 100% hydrogen peroxide. And you know, that, that can blow up your house. But it's only a 3% solution. So you're making it a 1.5% solution. So don't swallow it. Just swish it around in your mouth for about 30 seconds, however long you can hold it. It's going to foam a little bit, which is fine. And then you rinse your mouth afterwards with water. I, this is also great for gingivitis because it'll kill germs that are in your mouth. Okay. You can do this two to three times a day. Hydrogen peroxide kills germs, including virus. So you sh- should you begin to develop respiratory symptoms, you can add hydrogen peroxide to a nebulizer and breathe it in. And that's also very helpful. An important part of keeping your immune system strong is to try hard to avoid processed sugar. Keep in mind that alcohol is a super sugar. Sugar suppresses the immune response for up to seven hours after you ingest it. Shutting off the immune response on a regular basis will make you more susceptible to infection. If you must have sugar, have it when you know you're not going to be leaving the house and potentially exposing yourself to this or any other virus. It's best to avoid sugar altogether. But sugar is extremely addictive. It's not so easy to eliminate completely. 
but you can work on reducing the amount of sugar you ingest, reducing a little bit more each week. And you'll find that you, you won't even want as much. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables to get the nutrients you need and to feed the benefic beneficial bacteria that live in your gut. You have 10 times more organisms living in your gut than you have cells in your body. And you have 100 times more bacterial genes than human genes. The bacteria living in your gut has a major, major impact on your health. Because bacteria reproduce in minutes, the genetic makeup of these bacteria can adapt very quickly to changes in the human body. The microbiome is therefore much more important in controlling disease than the human genome. Many of our body's functions are subcontracted to these bacteria. We don't have enough genes for all the chemical reactions we need to perform. So we farm them out to these microorganisms to do them for us. We have thousands of colonies of organisms and they can be both beneficial and malevolent. Beneficial bacteria work with your immune system to fight off infection. Often these bacteria are better than drugs in fighting disease. They fight for territory. People with healthy guts are much less likely to get sick. And when they do, they recover quickly. Your diet will determine which colonies of bacteria will flourish in your gut. When you eat, you're not eating just for yourself, but for these trillions of organisms. The chemicals and digestive residue these bacteria produce when they digest the foods you give them will impact not just your digestion, but your immune and neurological responses as well. More neurotransmitters are produced in the gut than in the brain. And a good part of your immune system resides there as well. Proper communication between the gut bacteria and the T cells and B cells of your immune system are vital to its proper functioning. The gut bacteria send the early warning signs that get your immune system in gear. They are your first line of defense against infection. Including probiotic and prebiotic foods in your diet will strengthen your immune system, a good proportion of which resides in the gut. A probiotic food contains live organisms. Foods such as yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, Anything fermented is probiotic. A prebiotic food does not contain live organisms, but contains nutrients that these organisms thrive on. And this allows the beneficial bacteria to multiply. Fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, fiber are prebiotics. They feed the beneficial bacteria so that they can multiply and produce the chemicals that are so vital to our health. When we eat animal products and processed foods, we are not giving the beneficial bacteria the nutrients they need to thrive. And over time, they can die off. Instead, we are feeding the less desirable colonies of organisms that produce chemicals that are harmful to our health. While small amounts may not cause great harm, if these foods are the main components of your diet, you will be at risk of developing the conditions which puts you at risk of death should you catch this coronavirus. Also keep in mind that living in an overly protective and sanitary environment, which we are tending to do right now, reduces our ability to fight disease. Our immune system is strengthened and rebuilt as we are exposed to new organisms. When we interfere with that exposure, we weaken our immune response. We can be careful and do the social distancing we feel we need, but we need to go outdoors regularly and breathe some fresh air. No matter what our diet consists of, we should make an effort not to overeat, which is hard to do when you're stuck at home with nothing else to do. Uh, but overeating stresses the body. Eat foods that are easier to digest, such as fruits and vegetables, meat, poultry, fish, they take a long time to digest. We use about 35% of the energy our bodies produce to digest the foods we eat. 
if we can reduce this amount, our bodies will have more energy to fight off disease or any, anything else, and inflammation, anything else. That's why when we're sick, we lose our appetite. Our bodies are trying to conserve the energy for healing. So eat foods that are easier to digest, especially in the evening before you're going to sleep. Try to exercise every day. Exercise is not only a stress reducer, but it strengthens the immune system. Even standing and shaking your whole body for a few minutes is very beneficial. Try to go for a walk every day. Walk around the house if you can't go out. Sit down on your chair and just walk, move your legs on your chair. Stretch your body in multiple directions so that you don't stiffen. Do what you can. Being stuck at home means we're less active, so we need to create our own movement. You gotta keep moving. Go outdoors every day. Nature is a wonderful stress reducer. If you can't go outside, listen to some nature sounds on your computer or on your phone. Also make sure you get enough sleep. Do a little meditation or, or anything that relaxes you before going to bed. Our bodies heal when we sleep. Especially don't be afraid. Even though the media has made sure to hype all this up and scare everyone, Remember that fear is a negative emotion and it is destructive to our health. We can take the precautions that are right for us without fear. Do what you can to think positive thoughts and feel positive emotions. Negative thoughts and emotions can be worse than bad food. They release chemicals that are bad for you. Positive thoughts and emotions do the opposite. They release chemicals that are good for you. Think happy thoughts all the time. Keep in mind that there's nothing better for your health than the emotions of love and gratitude. We can keep a journal, a couple of journals actually, on our night tables. The first we'll use for anything we want to get off our chest. We'll write whatever's bothering us so we can let it go. It's like talking to a shrink. We don't ever have to read it again. As a matter of fact, we can throw out the page that night or the next day if we want. It's just a way of releasing whatever is bothering us so that we can move on to better things. The second journal, we will want to read and reread. Here, we will write the things that we're grateful for. We should add at least one new thing each day. That is very healing. When we're feeling down, we should pull out our gratitude journal and read it. Even better, we should read it every day. Read it every day. At least once a day. Ideally, we want to strengthen weaknesses in the body and correct nutritional deficiencies, as they will impact our ability to fight disease. Diet is key, and we can supplement with herbs and other natural substances based on our own individual needs. Check with your doctor or pharmacist before taking supplements if you're taking any medication to make sure they don't interfere. There are no magic pills to health. We need to do what we can. Eat a good diet, get adequate sleep and exercise, relax and de-stress, concentrate on positive thoughts and emotions, and lean on each other when we need to. If we make sure we do what we can to improve our immune function. We will have the best outcome should we catch this virus or any other flu or illness. We can use the opportunity now that we have extra time to work on improving and maintaining our health. This will help us not just now that we're fighting the coronavirus, but in the future as well. I want to see all of you living good and productive lives well into your hundreds. Your life is a gift and your most important possession is your health. Preserve it. Thank you. I'll take any questions. Dina, I have Thank you, Dina. Raise your hands. Thank you so much, Dina. Um, I, are there questions? I have a question. Adele? Okay. Uh, may I speak? Yes, please, yes. Adele. Okay, on the internet, um, very often, almost daily, there are uh, articles about 
uh, do not eat this one particular food. Um, mm -hmm. It has to do about gut. The article goes on and on, and at the end, they want you to buy a product. Uh, Is there any one item that you should never eat? Um, there is no one, well, don't eat processed foods. Those are not, you know, uh, don't eat any foods that contain ingredients with a name you can't pronounce or don't even know what it is. Uh, eat real food. There are different people, okay, so we're all very unique. Our, our gut bacteria is as unique as our fingerprints, okay? Uh, we, depending on your gut bacteria, there will be foods that you will be able to tolerate uh, and will be good for you, and there will be foods that you'll have a hard time digesting. So it's a really individual thing. Um, I've seen those, uh, those articles. I mean, you can know yourself what foods give you uh, a harder time to digest and what foods don't. You know, without properly testing, it's hard to know. Uh, I do, when I see people, I do like a muscle response test and I can see if a food is not so wonderful for them or not. Um, in general, um, I know the the uh, the doctor you're referring to. He has a big thing on lectins, and he's doing something against lectins. And lectins do impact some people, and there are ways to uh, to make lectins less um, harmful, just in the way you're cooking. Like if you're cooking. Uh, like uh, you might have lectins in some in certain beans and grains, but if you cook them in a pressure cooker, that eliminates them. And not everybody is sensitive to the same thing. So it's really hard to know uh, individually. There's no individual diet that's great for everyone. There's no individual supplement that's great for everyone. There's no individual, any. Every, you're all individuals. Everyone has their own unique, um, Unique, you're your unique self, and you're, you're the gut bacteria, which you started out inheriting from your mom, developed over time as you were exposed to, as you played in the dirt, you know, babies eat dirt, and they eat, and they do all that, and that's how they develop their, their, you know, it's not a bad thing, actually, when you're living in a too clean environment, it's not so good. As you get older, the more exposure you have to antibiotics, uh, the more harmful that is to your gut bacteria. And the more drugs you take, that also impacts your gut bacteria. And as your gut bacteria, as the colonies, as the diversity diminishes, uh, there will be more foods you'll be sensitive to. So if you can avoid taking antibiotics, you know, by all means do. There are times where you can't avoid it. Um, but try to, uh, to eat a diet that that actually feed the good bacteria and try to have things that are fermented every day. You know, you can't repopulate your gut bacteria by eating fermented foods, but they will be, uh, they'll be available for at least a week or two after you eat them. They may not last forever, but they'll be available for a while. And they help you digest and, and get rid of inflammation. Doreen? Doreen, you're muted. Anyone that's on the phone, if you have a question, why don't you just ask her now? Please mention some fermented foods in particular, please. Fermented foods? Okay. Yogurt. You know, you remember the old days when our, our parents used to make their own yogurts and their own, you know, those are fermented foods. Uh, we used to make our own pickles. Those are fermented foods. The store-bought ones are, you know, unfortunately, anything that contains bacteria in the store, uh, it's, it gets damaged quickly, it spoils quickly, so they boil everything, and then they kill the bacteria. But any kind of yogurt, kefir, especially homemade, because you know you have more control of that. Um, miso, kimchi, uh, sauerkraut, you know, 
any kind of uh, raw pickles that haven't been boiled or anything like that, those are all fermented. You know, you can also take probiotic supplements, but there are so many supplements out there and there is no one supplement that I would recommend for any, for everybody. Uh, if you take the probiotic that's right for you, it, it can have a major, major impact on your health. But th there is no one that I would recommend for across the board. I, I give, if people come and see me and they need one, it's always a different one for everybody. Thank so, you. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Was that Beth that had asked? I'm sorry? I, 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 I'm trying to recognize your voice. Is this Beth? <laughs> Yes, it is. Who is this, please? Sheila. Oh, hi. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Greetings to you, Beth, and um, we're glad you're here. Oh, I love all you do. I, I applaud you loudly every, every time I tune in on one of your uh, programs. You're outstanding and such a great, great help to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Annette, did you have something that you wanted to ask? Annette? No, Annette, anything? Guess not. Guess not. Okay. Grace? I mean, um, no, I just want to say when I took antibiotics, I took acidophilus with it because it had a tendency to um, make you have diarrhea. But Absolutely. I read an, yeah. But now I read an article about the coronavirus, and it said if you have diarrhea with the coronavirus, you should not, not try to stop it because it's getting rid of the virus. And it's, it, well, that's one way of working. That's uh, good. Well, yes and no. Uh, you know, in the old days when people got sick, they, the first thing they do is give you an enema. And uh, that was, you know, to get rid of anything, any bad organism. It does get rid of bad organisms. Um, but if you were, if you ever, this is one, one uh, probiotic that I would recommend. Um, if you're ever on taking antibiotics, I would recommend that you take uh, the, that you take the probiotic Goulardi. Uh, it's called Saccharomyces Goulardi. So it is S. Usually when you talk about uh, bacteria, you give them, they have a first name and a last name. Usually you give the first initial, like acidophilus is lactobacillus acidophilus, but you, it would be sold as L acidophilus. This would be sold as S. Boulardi, B-O-U-L-A-R-D-I-I. -I. And uh, the, why that's better is because acidophilus is a bacteria and when you take the antibiotics, it's going to kill it off. So you're, you're taking the, it's helpful, but you're taking it and it's killing it off as you're taking it. Boulardi is not a bacteria. It's, it's actually a yeast. It's a beneficial yeast. And it acts like Pac-Man, gobbles up all the bad guys. So it is something that you, you, when no, you, better. when you, huh? It's better. Yeah. It's when, uh, when you have, um, the reason you get diarrhea when you get, when you take an antibiotic is because you're killing off the beneficial bacteria in the body. And the, if you look, if you think of your gut as real estate, you know, as real estate is being emptied, other people move in. And so you're getting the, the, the malevolent organisms that are multiplying and they're causing diarrhea. Well, Boulardi, being that it's a yeast, is not going to be killed off by the antibiotic. And it's going to work as Pac-Man, gobbling up the bad organisms and will stop the diarrhea. And you always want to kill off the bad organisms. So uh, it is something good to have in the house. And if you get diarrhea, this is something good to take. And it's, um, you know, I take it with me when I travel because you don't know what you're exposed to when you're traveling. Um, but definitely with antibiotics. And acidophilus, acidophilus is, you know, Boulardi does not reside in the gut naturally. It's not part of your gut flora. 
uh, acidophilus is. It's a major part of your gut flora. And it is being destroyed when you take antibiotics. So what would be good is during the time you're taking the antibiotics to take the Boulardi. Mm -hmm. After you're done with the antibiotics, you can take acidophilus or bifidus or something else to, uh, to try to replenish what you've lost. I don't know. Oh, so, that's, so, that, so that's better after. It's better after the diet. afterwards. It, you benefit more after because you're as you're taking it, it's being kill, killed off. Like you're not yeah. getting so much benefit from it. If you're going to take it at this, you know, with it, you make sure you don't take it at the same time for sure, because you're going to have no benefit if you take it at the same time. You take it afterwards oh. for for a few weeks afterwards, and that would be helpful. But during the time of the antibiotic, you can take the Boulardi, and that would be probably the best uh, probiotic to take at that time. Mm -hmm. Where now, does one purchase Boulardi? Is that from the pharmacy? Is that from the health food store? You can go, uh, yeah, a health food store would have it. Whole Foods would have it. Uh, uh, you might be able to get online, Amazon, you know, or any vitamin shop online. You can get that. And, you know, I would t take it probably if you're on antibiotics, I would take it. Or if you have diarrhea, I would take it like three times a day. So that's S-G-O-U-L-A-R-D-I-I? -I? It's B, B O U. Oh, S, the, oh, S is the initial, Saccharomyces boulardi, S boulardi, S dot, you know, and boulardi, B-O-U-L-A-R-D-I-I. -I. Okay, I wrote it down. Thank you. So I that, that never, is, yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't need antibiotics again. <laughs> no, hopefully you won't need it. I mean, it's, it's yeah. you know, biotics are great. Antibiotics are great. You know, if you have a, a life-threatening infection, they, they, they're wonderful for you. But if you, uh, if you can avoid taking them, if you can, if you can have an infection that's not life-threatening, that somehow can, you can treat with antibiotics, it's, it's better if you can do that. Doreen? Doreen, you're muted. You're muted again, Doreen. And Grace is also muted. Oh, sorry. That's, that's okay. Shelf life. The Bilotti, like you can't keep it around for a long time? You can keep it. I, I keep it in the fridge. I mean, you should keep all probiotics in the refrigerator. Right, right. You're, but, dealing, right. you're dealing with live organisms. Right, but don't they have a... Um, you can keep it for a while. You can keep it for a couple of years. They, I mean, you, you know, you can always go buy it, you know, when you need it. Right. Uh, it's... Uh, but it is a, it's, it's the one probiotic that I recommend, not necessarily to everybody uh, all the time, but if, uh, you know, I see a lot of people that have digestive issues and they're fighting like a, um, like a systemic yeast infection, many of them, and they're tired and they have all kinds of symptoms. Uh, they you know, Boulardi makes a big difference for them because it's killing off the bad organisms that have sort of taken over in their body. But they have to also, with it, make a, a lot of dietary changes. But I do use it for other things, but it is very beneficial when you take antibiotics. Yes. Adele? I have a question about sauerkraut. Can you uh, buy the sauerkraut they sell in the deli area or... Is there a way? Okay, of so there are there are some sauerkrauts. You have to buy raw sauerkraut because a lot of it is boiled because they want to increase shelf life. So if there's bacteria in there, it'll only be it'll only be good for so long. So they, you know, uh, uh, the the ones they sell in cans and that are not refrigerated, don't buy. Those are not. I mean, they might taste good and you can you can enjoy them, but they're not going to give you uh, the, the probiotics that you're looking for. If you go into like, uh, I know Whole Foods has a refrigerated section right. that has a lot of fermented, like uh, raw pickles, raw sauerkraut, some kimchi, all these fermented foods in there that you can buy from there. Thank and you. I, you know, I can't speak for all stores, but 
bacteria. As long as it hasn't been boiled and, and if, you know, you want the bacteria, you don't want to kill it off. Thank you. And then did you have something you wanted to ask? Oh, I'm afraid I, oh, no, no, thank you. Okay, great. Um, so if I bought pickles in the refrigerator section, it's most likely not boiled and it's healthier. As long as it says raw on it. Oh, I have to look at the, at the label of the, the right, last right. pickle. But I bought right. refrigerated pickles. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, I grew up, my mom used to make pickles. So those are fermented. Uh -huh. I mean, that's how you make pickles. You ferment them. You know, yeah, well, I lived in Chicago, which is a big city, and so we we didn't make have a you, you know gardener things like that. Yeah, but when I had my Victory Garden, it, we didn't grow cucumbers during the war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can pickle anything. You can pickle. Right. Uh, my sister-in-law still does her own pickles. She pickles cauliflower and mm -hmm. and cucumbers and peppers and all, all kinds of vegetables. Uh -huh. And these are, this, that's fermented, you know, because once, you know, you, you basically, I think you add a little bit of salt or whatever. I don't have, I'm not going to give you an exact recipe. And you let it sit on your counter and it ferments. Vinegar. Uh -huh. So. Yeah, okay. All right. Adele, you said something? Uh, do you put vinegar in it to ferment it? I don't sure. think you, 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 you could put some vinegar, but, you know, I'm, I don't make my own pickles, so I can't speak for I did. You, you could go online there you can put the the you can put vinegar does you know adds a little bit of flavor maybe to the pickle and stuff the uh the fermentation process is just basically letting it sit outside being exposed to the air and and getting bacteria and stuff letting that 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 ferments it so that uh what you put in there is, you know, like what you can put whatever you want in there. So, so if you make your own pickles, this is great. You know, then you're getting, you know, you know, in the old days, uh, like your uh, grandparents' time, it, people didn't buy stuff. Like they made their own yogurts, they made their own pickles, they made their own. And people were used to eating pr probiotic foods. Today, we don't do that. And we, we, we take a lot more antibiotics. They never took antibiotics. So our guts have really um, suffered. Our, our bacteria, uh, microbiota has suffered as a result of that. And it, does, it has a major, major impact on our health. I'm gonna show, share, this. share this, one second. You guys can see that? It's two ingredients. Ah. Ah, there you go. One yeah, yeah. And you let it, I, uh, let, sauerkraut let, I've made. Sauerkraut I have made. And, and, uh, but I haven't made pickles. I, I have made sauerkraut a few times. Right. And you let it sit out. And you have let it sit out. Before I let it sit on my counter. Yes. Right. It kind and of smells the house a little bit, but it's it okay. basically tells you it ferments. So you go right. on and you can find it. But I do make, I make my own kefir every day. Uh, and I have that every day, which is kind of like a liquid yogurt, but you, you can buy those. You can buy kefir or kefir. Some people call it kefir. Yeah. Uh, is there a lot, of, a lot of sugar in that? I don't, well, I make my own. I, I, I don't eat dairy myself, so I make it out of cashew milk. Oh, I cool. just take cashews and water, I blend it, and then I just take a starter and add it to it. That's it, I don't put anything else, and I let it sit on my counter overnight, and the next day it's ready. <laughs> Is there a problem with dairy, Dina? Uh, well. Inflammation. It's a whole, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a whole topic. I personally don't eat dairy. I, I personally feel that cow's milk is made for calves to turn into cows. It's not made for human consumption. Okay. Uh, uh, if you must have milk, uh, go with like a goat milk or sheep milk, goat cheese, sheep cheese. Goat milk or sheep milk is much, much closer to human milk than cow's milk. Cow's milk is much higher in protein and human's milk is much higher in fat because we need the fat, especially for the brain development and all that stuff. And cows need the protein because they go, in one year, they become like full, you know, they get really fat. Uh, so I personally, uh, it's, it's a highly allergenic food. Uh, 
and it does cause inflammation and a lot a lot of issues some people can handle it better than others right. uh, i don't even mean about lactose intolerance i mean the protein <laughs> itself in the fat the casein in the fat like my i have a daughter who's allergic to the casein in the fat in the in the milk she's not lactose intolerant she doesn't get diarrhea or anything from taking it but it makes her tired and uh, gives her brain fog and it just overall uh, reduces her level of health. So, but that's in general, I avoid it. Huh? But, um, I remember having a client who was very much into natural foods and he in, uh, felt that one should use whole milk, not skim milk or 1% or whatever, that you need. Whole milk is better. Whole milk yes. is much better. And even better is if you go, if you can get uh, milk from, uh, from a farm that hasn't been pasteurized, right. homogenized, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That can be very beneficial. If you haven't had homogenized, pasteurized, you can go to the farm and get the milk. From there, uh, I've had clients who, um, mm -hmm. I had a little boy who, who I was treating who had all kinds of issues, and he was bipolar and all that stuff. And uh, he, he did well with the milk from the farm. But I told him he can't have anything homogenized. Either he would get the goat milk or he would get the milk from the farm. And the farm uh, would only sell it to uh, families who, who had kids who had issues. They wouldn't just make it available to the general public. So she was able to go and, um, and get that and made a big difference. It's, it's an illegal, my daughter gets that all the time. Isn't it illegal to sell it? Well, it kind of depends on the state you're yeah. in. Some states say it is, and say yeah. say it's not. It, I I don't know what's going on in Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, I personally yeah. don't take it. Uh, I, you know, I uh, I don't use dairy. If I need to make something where I, I I'll use cashew milk, almond milk. Yeah. I'll use some kind of a nut milk, and I usually make it myself because I don't like the preservatives that are in right. it or, or any sugar or anything that's added. I, I have to interject here that you were talking about the cow's milk is for the calf, not for us. I would think that the almonds and the cashews are for the seeds to have the next trees coming up as well. Uh, that's that's true too, but it does say it does it does tell us it does tell us in the in the in the Torah that the the seeds and the fruit of the trees are for us. So, <laughs> but the milk, we're the only species in the world that drinks milk from another species. You think about it, you know, every, every mammal produces milk for its, for, for its young ones, but we're the only ones who are drinking milk from a different species. So, and that we drink milk beyond, you know, so many, you know, beyond chi young child. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. I want to Dina. thank you profusely, Dina. Uh, you're welcome. My pleasure. I'm glad that you guys are still getting together because that's helpful. Yeah. I don't want to lose your social contacts. We, we thanks to, to Doreen, we have a, many things that we get together for, including mm. lectures from the rabbis and uh, discussions Good, yeah. from the cantor and services and uh, discussion groups and so forth and so and you're you're, you're <laughs> and book club any of that and the book club that the grace club. actually leads right. oh yeah oh you have a you have your own book club okay. we have we have a temple book club yes mm -hmm. and you're more than welcome to participate i could give you the schedule if you like Okay, send me the schedule. I may. I, I, you know, I'm still like I told you. I'm waiting for Israel to open up its doors so I can go visit my kids. Uh, doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon. So, I am. I, you know, the shutdown occurred right like a week before I was supposed to go. Dina was supposed to go to Israel and decided that arriving and being uh, in two weeks quarantine, not able. No, 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 no. It wasn't my choice. <laughs> I was I willing to do that. I yeah. was willing to do that, but El Al canceled all flights, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. The Israel closed its borders. So yep. 
I'm not an Israeli citizen. I can't, they only, they would only let Israeli citizens in. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not an Israeli citizen. I can't go in, you know, unless they let me. <laughs> I heard they're allowing people to Malia now, so I think you can go. Uh, they are allowing citizens to return. They're not allowing non-citizens yet. I don't, I don't know, know if it's true, but I heard that, that from some countries, I, I don't oh, know. Oh, I'm sure not from the U.S. Yes, they're not discussing the countries that have had very low rates of coronavirus, but unfortunately, we've had high rates in the U.S. Uh, we're, we're not open yet. No, no. Yeah. No, I, I would find that. My son-in-law works in politics and stuff in Israel, and so he's on the know on all this. And uh, he's going to let me know as soon as I'm able to, to do that. I read something the other day where they were concerned about Israel, which has such an effective lockdown, so that the rate was low. But then opening up, there are um, fewer people with antibodies who have recovered Absolutely. or whatever. They, uh, yes, I read, I read this morning that uh, they were saying that Israel has not developed herd immunity. Right. The lockdown was extremely severe. I mean, my kids couldn't go more than 100 meters from their homes. They couldn't go anywhere. Right. Uh, right. And they shut down very early and they shut down their borders to all countries. And um, they had, I think the death rate was 281 which, I mean, you know, compared to other countries, it's phenomenal, but not enough people got sick and now they're opening up. I mean, the country is in financially in a terrible bind right now. They have to open up and they open up the schools because for people to go to work, the kids have to go to school and they're starting to see, um, you know, a bunch of cases. I mean, they haven't had any steps, but it, more cases. And they said they've done like antibody tests what they do in, in other countries to determine, like to get an approximate number of how many people actually got it and do we have herd immunity? And they said Israel does not have herd immunity. So I don't know what will be in Israel. <laughs> I don't think they can afford another shutdown uh, of their economy. Although tourism is a big industry there and that's still shut down, so. Yeah. Well, life above economics yep <laughs> yeah anyway thank you nice so to much see all of you. yes and take care we'll thank say goodbye okay i'm gonna end oh, brian right. awesome. thank you okay bye-bye <laughs>